Hey guys, I wanted to tell you a, a funny story that happened to me on the way to calibrating the tension, thread tension unit on my Singer 500A Rocketeer. And it was a problem that I hadn't read about in any service manual or seen a video about. Um, and it involves the release of tension that occurs when you lift the presser bar. And so, as most people know, no matter how hard you have this tension set, when you lift the presser bar, a lever here on a spring presses on a pin right there that somehow, I didn't exactly know how, releases all the tension in the thread tension unit. And so you can see there's lots of tension here. These discs are under tension. They're very they're squeezing together, squeezing your thread. Lift the presser bar and the discs are now free to wobble. And it doesn't matter where you have this tension set, same thing. They're under tension now, lift the presser bar, no longer under tension. And so the thread can pull freely through here. And then of course, when you lift the presser bar to remove your work that you've just sewn, you can pull the thread through the needle very easily. And so what I noticed was this wasn't happening, which was disturbing because I had just overhauled this tension unit and I knew that it was working perfectly. It was clean, it was all oiled. Um, everything was fine about it. But I noticed that its engagement with my machine wasn't quite right. And what I saw is that this pin wasn't quite sticking as far into the case as I thought it should. Which makes sense because when this lever moved forward, there wasn't anything for it to press. And so I wanted to know why that could be and what that was about. And I thought, is something wrong with the pin? Is it broken? Um, and so I took it apart and I had a few spares to compare it to and it led me to some conclusions which I'll share. Okay, so here is the needle thread tension unit fully disassembled. Um, you have the stud as it's referred to in the uh, service manual and that's the thing that holds on to everything and gets screwed into the machine. And into the stud gets placed the tension releasing pin which is, you know, tells you what it does which is why I thought this was primarily the problem. And that fits into a channel that goes through the stud and pokes into the machine. And then you have your take-up spring, the tension discs, and uh, the thread guard, which go together as a package and slide onto the stud. And then in order, the next things that, uh, that are there um, are the indicator. It's called the indicator in the, in the service manual. And this sort of serves as a cuff that goes on here and has your plus and minus to tell you which way to turn the, the tension dial for more or less tension. And inside that, when it's sitting on the stud, fits the spring, uh, the stop washer, the what's known as the adapter, which is what actually turns onto the threads of the stud, and then the dial, which fits over the adapter and screws on. And then this is your primary means of calibration, um, at least as far as these numbers go, which uh, I'll talk about later are pretty arbitrary, of course. Um, and so I was trying to figure out what the heck was going on with the tension releasing pin and so I had another spare unit which I took apart and I compared the sizes of the tension releasing pins and they were all the same including the one that's in the machine currently and these are about 1 and 5 16 inches long you can sort of barely see that there um, and there's a really fantastic video by Andy Tube where he shows you how to make one of these out of a, a roofing nail, which is just awesome because you can imagine these sometimes probably get lost or sometimes bent or some, something happens to them. But um, so the tension releasing pin was, was of a uniform length with all the others and other units I had. And so I couldn't figure out for the life of me what was causing the tension not to be released when the presser bar was lifted. And so I went back to looking at how the actual mechanism works and what pieces move when you do things. So here we are back on the side of the machine um, with the tension unit installed into it for no reason other than to show you that when you lift the presser bar, you can see the presser bar lifter engages this lever on a spring, again presses this pin, but watch what happens to the tension unit out front here. There's really just one thing that moves. And that's the simply named, uh, inadequately named indicator, which actually does all the work of releasing the tension. And once I realized that that's what was going on, 
and that that wasn't actually moving when I was lifting the presser bar, um, things became a little more obvious about what was wrong with the tension unit. So here we are back at the disassembled unit and for instructional purposes I've only reassembled the stud, the tension releasing pin, and the so-called indicator uh, in their positions that they would be in the fully assembled unit. And you can see that when you press the tension releasing pin, yes, it engages the indicator directly. And that makes sense when you know that the spring fits in there and the stop washer fits in there and the adapter, also so-called, which is really what does the work of providing the tension. So that once the tension's engaged, Again, pressing the tension releasing pin presses the indicator forward, and that releases all the tension discs which sit behind it. And so, it was in looking at that piece itself, the indicator, that it became clear what was going on with my unit that was malfunctioning. And that is that where the unit engages the tension releasing pin, I've got a couple to show you, is right here in the back where the tension releasing pin presses with its flange that's flat here against this crossbar. And what became immediately clear was that this crossbar was bent in the tension unit that wasn't working. And so you can see if we compare these two that in the left one the crossbar is bent slightly backwards to engage with that tension releasing pin and in this one it's a little flatter. And so what I had to do was obvious if I wanted to use the indicator that's on the machine is that I had to take this and use a punch to very, very, <clears throat> very gently indent the crossbar on the indicator to push it back far enough to engage the tension releasing pin so that when the presser bar lifter is lifted, there's something for the tension releasing pin to actually push and release the tension on the discs. And I haven't tried this one out, but I can bet you that it probably doesn't release the tension quite as much as, say, this one does. And the one that's in my machine now, um, I've made to look like this, um, with the sort of just slight backwards bend to it, so that it does actually function normally now, as you could see when I, when I showed you earlier on the machine. One other comment about um, these so-called indicator pieces um, is that in Andy Tube's video where he shows you how to uh, disassemble, reassemble, and calibrate the tension unit, um, his was actually broken. Uh, this crossbar was was missing from um, the indicator on his tension unit, which also interestingly was made of plastic. And so he had ordered a new piece which came and worked perfectly. Um, but in the case of plastic, these are I assume aluminum. Um, since they're light enough and they're definitely metal. Um, in the case of plastic, you wouldn't be able to do this slight calibration maneuver of indenting the crossbar there. Um, and so if, it, if you had a plastic one that wasn't working quite right, um, I would think that you know rather than trying to bend it, your only option really would be to maybe make yourself a tension releasing pin that was longer out of a nail, um, which again, I'd reference Andy Tube's video for how to do that. Um, because there's really no recourse you have if you have a plastic piece to try to bend it somehow and expect it to maintain that bend and then work um, to release the tension when it's engaged with the tension releasing pin. So all of this messing around with the thread tension unit caused me to think about um, how to calibrate it and what the best way to do that was because that was my goal uh, to begin with before I had the funny little problem. And I'd read a lot and, and watched a bunch of the videos that are out there um, by really incredibly capable people with a lot of incredible insight on how to do these things. And I came up with what I thought for this machine was probably what made the most sense, at least to me, um, based on all the advice that's out there. Um, and I think when, when I thought about what this unit actually has to accomplish, it, it needs to contain all the tensions that you might ever want to use. And that should probably include zero, no tension at all. Um, and not just when the presser foot is up, but when the, the unit is at its lowest setting. 
Um, and then even maybe sometimes less than zero because when you realize that this machine um, can sew with two needles, um, you may have two threads in there because there are three tension discs in here. And with two threads in there, you're gonna have um, that much more space um, between the discs and a little bit more tension. And so if it doesn't quote unquote go below zero, um, you won't be able to release all that tension with the unit itself when you have two threads in there. And so the, the service manuals and um, some other uh, resources suggest that um, you measure the tension at the needle um, so the thread that's down here, and what, and they, they say you know um, ten to five to, to five to fifteen grams or so um, is a good um, tension down here when this is at its lowest setting at zero. And one of the ways to to measure that is a tensometer, which I happen to have one of that's really awesome, um, and uh, it, it works pretty cool. And you can actually figure out what the tension on a thread is. Um, but what, what didn't make sense to me was was trying to measure down here at the lowest setting um, some sort of range of 5 to 15 grams because what's happening is up here this guide and the take up lever and this guide and this guide and certainly this guide maybe not this one so much are, and the needle itself are providing tension to the thread and so when you're measuring um, some sort of baseline by pulling it through all these guides as well um, and including some sort of baseline tension on the thread tension unit, it, it all seems just kind of a little arbitrary. Whereas if you, at this lowest setting, have absolutely no tension here and take this out of the equation, what you're stuck with here is not changeable unless you choose to thread a different way or avoid some of the guides, which is also possible. Um, you can see I've avoided the um, thread metering unit or the what they call the automatic thread control which uh, only ever appeared on this machine and no one really advocates using as far as I can tell. Um, but unless you, you know, avoid some of these guides, you're always going to have a certain amount of tension in this thread. And so what makes the most sense to me is having the baseline of absolutely no tension on the thread tension unit. And so the way that I think makes sense for this machine to accomplish that is what Andy Tube refers to as zeroing out the tension unit, um, which um, the machine, his video, um, works with a, a dial behind the actual nut that you screw, which has holes in it, which is, uh, there's a whole sort of, you know, again, I referenced the video below of how he accomplishes that. And I think that with this machine, um, what makes sense to me to do is to zero it out uh, in the following way. And so what you do is you'll remove this dial, the outer dial, which comes off with a set screw that's there. I think you can see that. And what you're left with is the adapter here. And so with the pressure foot down, of course, what I'll do is get you zoomed in here a little bit so you can see. There we go. So what I'll do is I'll I'll tighten this to the point where there's no more play here. Just to that point where there's very little play between the indicator and the tension discs it's pressing on. And I'll call that zero. And again, this is a little arbitrary, but your, 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 your goal is to have a baseline of almost no tension in this thing. And so when you have that, where you think it should be and where it feels like there's very little tension on the discs at all, and maybe even a little bit of play, again, recognizing that you might have two threads in there, which is gonna provide just a little more tension than just one thread, what you do is you put this dial back on and you turn it all the way to the left against the stop washer behind it. And what that has is now your setting is just less than zero and you'll tighten the set screw. And now it's locked in. And so now you have a zero tension and then all the way up to nine doesn't go to 11, but it goes to nine and just passed. And this is insanely more tension than you'll ever need for any project, I'm pretty sure. Um, it's thread breaking tension. And so between there and all the way at zero, I think you have now all the tensions you could possibly want in that unit without having to recalibrate it for a project. And to me, at least that makes the most sense of how to zero out this unit and where the calibration makes the most sense for this machine.